Hey everyone, welcome back again to the channel and to a new video. So this video was very requested. You, many of you guys asked me uh, on the comments also uh, how to actually uh, restore um, your computer from dot .files. So for example, you know I moved now to i3 and I put my dot .files on GitLab. So how do I actually restore my computer or how do I restore my dot .files to another machine? If, for example, I get a new laptop or a new machine or whatever. So this is actually going to show you in this video how you can restore your computer using your dot .files. Now, I'm going to use my dot .files, but on another machine so that you can see also the challenges that there are there because your dot .files are usually configured for one machine. But then, of course, if you restore them on another machine with a different, a different configuration, you might have to adjust uh, several things. And that's what I'm going to do in this video. So here, as you can see, I have a base install of Arch. Uh, I didn't install any desktop environment or window manager here, just a basic install. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to download my repository for i3 on GitLab, and I'm going to then restore my system with those dot .files. So first things first, let's check if the system has updates, because we want to make sure that we are up to date before doing that. So let me here clean up the terminal and type in sudo pacman-syu and enter my sudo password here. And as you can see, it's up to date, so we have nothing else to do. So let's now download our uh, repository from GitLab. So let's type in git clone. And then the GitLab address, so https colon slash slash, then gitlab.com slash your username, in my case is EF Linux, and then the name of the repository, which is in my case main dash desktop dash i3. And then we can hit enter. It's going to take a second here to clone it. There you go. Now let me clean up the terminal and we need to move into the new directory that was just created there. You can see the main desktop i3. So let's type in cd and then main desktop i3. And as you can see here, I have all my dot .files. So what is very important here, guys, if you plan to restore your machine from dot .files, of course, it's extremely important that you have the packages installed because without those, the configuration files won't probably work because you need all the software already installed, like packages like Better Lock Screen or Pycom or Nitrogen or stuff like that. Otherwise, the configuration files won't work without the package. So make sure uh, that you have those installed. Now, what I did in my repository here I actually created a packages script that you can see here in the list and I have actually done a video before this one about how you can a little bit automate your installation of packages with a script like this this is nothing special it's not a shell script per se with if statements and while loops and so on it's just a pure uh, shell script with just basic install commands with pacman and packages from the AUR so nothing special there but I'm just doing this to automate a little bit the installation and once the packages are installed I can just move those blue directories that you see there into place into my dot config directory in my home directory and basically I just then need to modify a small a small things and then the i3 window manager will be up and running so first things first let me install my packages so first I need to give execute uh, permissions to the script so I'm gonna type in here chmod plus x and then packages.sh and now I can run the script with dot slash and then packages.sh. Now, this is going to take some time. If you want, you can go ahead in the script and look what's in there. You can, of course, also put more packages or remove certain packages if you don't want them. It's really up to you. Now, I, I've done it in a way that is uh, automated here. I'm not asked for anything. Again, this is, again, personal preference. Some people want to actually confirm the options during the installation. I am using these packages all the time, so I know the packages and I know what they do. That's why I'm not going to uh, be asked for anything here, but it's really up to you. You can always change this option in the script if you decide to do so. Now, um, this is going to take maybe one minute, so I'm just going to pause the video here and I'll be back with you guys when it's done. So here we go, guys. The packages are now installed. You can see also the display manager was already activated. So I basically now just have to configure my dot files. So let's clean up the terminal and type in ls. 
So there are two things that I need to do before actually moving my directories into my .config directory in the home directory. And that is, I need to first put my pycom.com file in place and then change one setting in the LightDM uh, display manager because the original one is actually set up to run on my main machine, but not on this display. So first, let me move the pycom.com file that you see there into place by typing in sudo cp and then pycom.conf. And I move this under slash etc slash xdg slash pycom.conf and hit enter. Now I want to edit that file, not the one in my repository, because I need to make a small change for the virtual machine. You probably can skip this step because if you're not installing this on a virtual machine, it doesn't really matter. But let me type in sudo vim slash etc slash xdg slash pycom.conf. And the option I need to change here is the vsync option, because on a virtual machine I need to disable this, otherwise the compositor will not work. There you go. And the other change that I need to do is, is in the LightDM Display Manager to give it the proper resolution for the virtual machine, because it's not going to be automatically uh, activated. So let me type in sudo vim slash etc slash LightDM and then LightDM.conf and hit enter. And I'm going to go down here to the seed group and I need to basically work on this display script and delete the hashtag here and tell the system the resolution with x render. So x render dash dash outputs and the display name is virtual one. This is very important because otherwise it will not work. I know it's virtual one because on the virtual machine on KVM it's always virtual one. And then dash dash modes and then 1920 per 1080. There you go. Now we can save this file and exit Vim. And now I can move my directories in place. So let's move these directories by typing in cp-r. So we have to make it recursive because we want to move everything also in the directories, of course. So the first directory, better lock screen. Then we want to move the dance directory for notifications. And then the i3 directory. And then also the i3 status directory. And also the rofi directory. And we're going to move this into the home directory under the slash dot config directory and then hit enter. There you go. So now we can go in there. Let's type in cd dot config. And you can see we have our directories there. So the only actually change I need to do here is in the i3 configuration file because there are some things there that I need to adjust uh, because of the virtual machine and, and the display. So this is one step that you need to be aware of also if you are going to restore these dot files on different machines. So let me type in, in here vim and then i3 slash config. And this is my configuration file. So let me go down here with control F until I find the status bar, which should be at the end of the file here. There you go. And uh, I actually need to change the output of the status bar because as you can see here, it's outputting to display port one. On my main machine, I have two displays, display port one and display port two. And, but here on the virtual machine, I don't have that. I have virtual one. So I need to change this, otherwise the status bar will not be displayed correctly. And that's one of the changes. Actually, uh, the screen layout here displays, I can actually remove the script because I don't need it for this particular machine. So I'm just going to comment this because I don't need the script and it's anywhere not existing. Everything else seems to be fine. Now I need to make also small change to the applications. So I go back here to my workspaces. And I need to change a few things here. So let me see. First of all, I need to disable Workspace 10 on DisplayPort 2 because I don't have DisplayPort 2 here. So I'm just going to comment this. And for the assigning class, this is fine. It's going to start Firefox on start. That's also fine. For, uh, Spotify is going to be on Workspace number 3. That's fine. But let's say I don't want to actually start it up automatically. So I'm just going to change this like this. And actually here, PC man, I don't want it to start automatically neither. And by the way, I see a typo here. This is actually not PC man with a capital P, but PC man with a small P. And I want to actually make this not floating because it's a smaller display. And the resolution, you can see here, I need to also deactivate this because that was actually thought for a 4K monitor. And everything else should be actually good. Uh, Caden Live is fine floating, but I need to change the size because I don't have that display. And I think for Virtual Manager as well, because I don't have that display neither. 
So I think this is actually mostly done. So let's save this file and exit Vim. And we should be able to go by rebooting the machine. So let's type in reboot. And it's going to take a second here to boot up to the grab boot loader. There you go. And we will be greeted by LightDM. There you go. And let's type in my password here. And you can see we have Terminator and the browser and the Bumblebee status. It's already up and working. Now, I didn't have a, a file for Terminator. I didn't create that actually. So let me actually adjust the profile here very quickly by changing here the underline, removing the title bar icon and not no title bar for me. And for the colors, white on black. The background is going to be transparent with 85%. That should be good. And I don't want to have the scroll bar, so we can just do that and then close it and open it again. And there we have Terminator. Now we have a black background because I actually didn't um, create any background yet, but no worries. Let's type in mod D and you can see Rofi is also working, so that's fine. Let's open up Nitrogen. And we're going to go here to the preferences and click the add button here. I installed actually by default the Arch Linux wallpapers. So I'm going to go here to file system root and then user share and then backgrounds and Arch Linux here and click select and then click OK. I'm going to select the wallpaper here and go to zoom fill and click apply. And you can see the wallpaper here in the background. So the machine is out and up, up and running. If we go to workspace number two, I have Firefox already there active. Let's move to space to workspace number three here and open up Spotify, see if it's working fine. And there you go. And let's move to workspace number five, which is meant actually for the PC man file manager. So let's type in PC man here. And you can see it's also working fine. So basically that's it. There might be some other adjustments I need to do here. You can see also on the top here, Bumblebee status is working fine, except for the sensor because it's a virtual machine. The LM sensor package is installed, but it's not reading, of course, because it's a virtual machine. We don't have any temperature to show here. That was meant actually for my main desktop. So I could go in there now and remove this uh, module for the sensors because it doesn't make sense to have it here on the virtual machine. But that's something minor. Everything else else seems to be working fine. There is still one last step I need to do is actually for the lock screen because I have the better lock screen installed but I don't have any lock screen uh, image to use. So let's go so let's go here to the browser and I'm going to type in here pexels.com which is actually a great source also for wallpapers. I'm going to type in here landscapes and hit enter. And let's choose one here. I'll choose this one. It looks very nice. And then click download. And I'm going to save it. There you go. Go back to the terminal. And I'm going to type in here better lock screen dash u. And I'm going to define here the directory, which is under downloads. And hit the tab key to autocomplete. And dash l for the option. And I'm going to have a dimmed photo. And then hit enter. It's going to take a second here to apply the effect and then it's going to lock the screen and then I can test out also my shortcut in the configuration file to see if it's working correctly. So you can see the lock screen is there. So I enter my password here and mod shift X is my shortcut and you can see it's working fine. So I can go back to my desktop. There you go. So this is an example on how you can restore your dot files in this case with the i3 window managers. Again, very important, be organized, organize your dot files in a way that it's easy to restore. Make sure that the packages are in place. Otherwise you might have problems with your configuration files. Those are my tips. If you try this out, let me know in the comments below how it's working for you. And if you have any question about it, let me also know in the comments below. As usual, I will try to answer you as soon as I can. And if you want to support my work, you can do so by becoming a Patreon, as you probably already know. We have now uh, on Patreon live webinars every month uh, where you can come in live and also ask your questions live directly with me. And we are taking one hour there and we are focusing on topics about Linux, of course. Or if you want to, you can also donate via PayPal through my website as well. Thank you so much, guys, for watching the video. I really appreciate that. And I'll see you very soon in the next one.